On 10 a.m. on October 20th, 2020, I checked into prison. I was locked in a cell. The hardest part about prison is the fear of the unknown. And you're stripped of every single thing you have. While I was in prison, I discovered this concept of hormesis. Hormesis is the concept that, very simply, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Strength only comes from battle. Strength only comes from pain. Strength comes from adversity. You have to feel the pain to have any gain. Prison was the most transformational event in my entire life. It was a necessary part of my life plan. Pain and challenge leads to strength. While I was in prison, I wrote a new book. I wrote a new book about what it means to live a life in prison. I wrote a book about the lessons from my fellow inmates and what it means for life and leadership. I wrote a new book to show some of the knowledge that I've gained from studying mitochondrial biogenesis and hormesis and quantum biology. You know, it was a book that came out of the pain of prison. 633 days inside. That's what I spent inside prison. Prison for me was a mastery of the system of rules. And by the end of my nearly 21 months, I totally perfected a system of mastering the rules of prison. And in prison, I mean, there's a rule for everything. When you can take your shirt off in the rec yard, when you can't, where you can walk, where you can't. I mean, there's red lines all over the place, literally and figuratively. And so my process of prison was learning how to obey. Being obedient, Yes, sir, yes, ma'am, right away, sir, right away, ma'am. That was the most important thing I perfected in prison. I mean, I cleaned toilets every morning. Whatever they wanted me to do, I did. And I did it with, with alacrity, I did it with calm and eagerness, and I did my absolute best job. As a leader, you have to have the humility to obey. You have to have the humility to admit when you're wrong, To to shut up, to say nothing, to step back, to be silent. All those things come from 21 months of a bang. If prison teaches you to be humble, if it teaches you one thing, it teaches you to be humble. What's more humble than being in a four by eight cell, getting up, cleaning toilets, and going to the bathroom with 20 other men in a disgusting, moldy, you know, big bug infested bathroom. It taught me what it means to be obedient. And it taught me, you know, when you're not in charge, you're not in charge. Get used to it. If you're self-aware, it, it, it teaches you humility. And, and that humility teaches you strength when it comes time to command. Uh, it, it's a whole other level of, of strength that you have. Every prisoner thinks about one thing all day long, is when am I going home? You dream about it, you fantasize about it. Of course you want to get out. You want to get out every second of every day. The biggest mistake that prisoners make is thinking they're going to get out tomorrow or thinking they're going to get out next week. Those are mind games that will absolutely destroy you. The only mindset that works in prison, is I'm going to be here for six years. I'm going to be here for my full sentence. Unless you have that mindset, you're going to destroy yourself. I mean, every prisoner gets in with hope, and it's dangerous. I remember one of my fellow inmates, he got in with hope, as we all do, on a 78-month sentence. He got so hyped up with hope that he thought he was going to get out. And he started filing all kinds of complaints with the Bureau of Prisons. He started having his lawyer call regional headquarters. And you know what the Bureau of Prisons did? They shipped his ass to a higher-level institution and they deprived him of every single thing he had at FPC Montgomery. 
and taught him a lesson. You don't rattle your cage. It's your cage, get used to it. I'm gonna be here for 60, 70, two months. I'm gonna get used to it. It's my life. I'm gonna find my happy spot. I'm gonna find my routine. I'm gonna find my friends. I'm gonna master it. Because I'm gonna be here for 72 months, which is what my sentence would have been if I not won my appeal. The summer of 2021, I started fasting. It's really when I really realized I got a plan now. I'm gonna take this time and I'm gonna get stronger, smarter. And that was the light bulb. That enabled me to ride this out. As of 6 p.m. tonight, I've done 51 fasts of over 90 hours in a row every week for 51 weeks. Every single action, every single word, every single thought, when you haven't eaten in five days, you process very carefully. So it's, it's a very different me. I, I discovered this fasting thing has triggered a regrowth. It's, it triggers brain-derived neurotropic factor. And the, after five days of fasting, you've got 2,000% of the normal brain-derived neurotropic factor, BDNF, and my neurons are growing like left and right. It's like I got this new brain. I got all these new emotions. I cry a lot, it's weird. It's like I'm super emotional, I'm super connected with my heart and my spirit, and it's all because my brain is growing. It's like I got this, this teenager's brain. On a quantum biology level, the brain is a quantum machine. The brain has, these, has something called quantum coherence. In order to operate our consciousness, the brain needs to be in a state of quantum coherence. And quantum coherence is, is disrupted by the presence of glucose in your system. The punchline to all of this is when you eat sugar every day, you have no quantum coherence. Yeah, you have no, you have, you have limited quantum coherence. You don't have an ability to connect with your fellow human beings. And really what's happening to most humans, unfortunately, is they eat too much and too often. And that sends them into a decoherent state. Over the last 21 months, from fasting and being in prison. I'm, I'm genetically a different person. And so, um, uh, I mean, genetically, I'm never going back to who I was. Oftentimes, our preference for peace and comfort is such that we avoid pain. We avoid starvation. We avoid cold. I took freezing cold showers in prison because that improves your mitochondrial biogenesis. One of the best things you can do, besides starving, is freezing. That took some getting used to. Getting in prison in the middle of January and turning on the shower as cold as it'll go and taking a three or four minute shower, it'll be a very quick shower. That's pain. And you don't stop shivering for a couple hours because prison's cold. But that makes you stronger on a genetic level, on a mitochondrial level. And I'm never gonna, gonna look for the cushy, luxurious life because that ultimately makes you weaker. Pain and challenge leads to strength. That's how biology works. My, the word I use is transformation. It, it, it speaks about, you know, a butterfly transforms, right? Caterpillar transforms to a butterfly, right? And so that's what that's what's really happening. It's not overnight. There's no reset button. The caterpillar doesn't reset and become a butterfly. It transforms. I fail early, I fail often. That's what I do. And I'm, I'm grateful for the experience. I would have never had the opportunity to transform my entire life. Um, and so it was all part of a necessary life plan for me. If someone had designed my life plan, they would have said, you know, Greg, you're getting a little, you know, you need, to, you need a few lessons. You need to learn a few things. And you need to go to the School of Hard Knocks. And it was absolutely necessary. Before going to prison, I was working very hard on my first book, 
failing early, failing often, how to turn your adversity into a greater advantage. And I, I released that the day I checked in. And it was the best thing I ever did. I gave out hundreds of copies of that book to my fellow inmates. Greg gave me his book that he wrote, and it was just inspiring because I never read a book in my life until I got to prison. Never, I, in school, I never read a book, ever. Because, like, I was never into reading. That was just never my thing. And he was like, here, read this book. And it was cool, though. It was a cool experience. I have Greg to thank for that. About five weeks into our friendship, Greg approached me and said, hey, I want to give you something. Well, this is a book I wrote. And he gives it to me, and I look at it. It's called Failing Early and Failing Often. I've read this book seven times, and I'm on number eight. And it is a book that just helps remind me that it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to, uh, to fail, because that's how we learn. And uh, just like the book says, you turn adversity into advantage. Before going to prison, I saw myself, and I, I, I self-identified as a business person and a leader. And now I, I'm a student, and I will always remain a student. I think my behavior has changed dramatically. I realized all of the mistakes I made in business were failing to step back and ask the right questions. We don't ask enough questions in life. Prison is a wonderful opportunity with no distractions to ask questions, who you are and where you are. Let's just take quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics runs the entire universe. Everything is quantum, everything. Every molecule is made up of quantum particles. And the best of the best of the best of the quantum physicists can't explain over 90% of the universe. So how the hell can we know anything? All we can say is I'm a student and I'm gonna ask questions. Uh, this is a book by uh, Roger Penrose. He's a quantum physicist, uh, Road to Reality. It's, uh, he's a physicist, uh, fa fascinating uh, on quantum physics. Uh, especially, I mean, here's talking about quantum entanglement which is where non-local particles can become entangled and can communicate faster than the speed of light, um, which Einstein didn't believe was possible, but it's how our quantum computers operate. And it turns out it's how our brain operates. What a student does is seek the truth. It's all a student does. When your brain is challenged, it grows. It's really simple. So anything I can do from quantum physics to um, engineering to German, uh, I study. I study hard. I'm a student, and I'm here to learn. That's it. Strength comes from adversity. That's the concept of hormesis. You have to feel the pain. I'm checking into prison in October of 2020. Did I want to feel the pain? No. I want to get the hell out of that prison immediately. Most people will not have a hermetic experience unless it's forced on them. I mean, I was forced to go to prison, right? Prison was a hermetic experience. 